Good evening, everyone. My name is Arda, and uh, today I'm going to talk about static typing and C++ in, uh, interfacing in C Python. So basically, the C implementation of the Python language. Uh, a bit of background about me and why I picked this topic is basically okay. Uh, I'm a postdoc uh, until next weekend at KTH, and soon I will be working as a data scientist at Ericsson. And I work usually with asynchronous algorithms uh, for big, big data problems and basically machine learning problems on uh, spanning different computing nodes. And for this reason, I use mainly C++ and then Python and Julia in my work pipeline. And basically, whenever you use Python, you choose, I don't know, TensorFlow or Torch. It's always C++ behind the scenes, of course. So basically, in a sense, I'm uh, mostly into C++. But then why I have prepared this presentation, I know, uh, like me, and maybe even more than me, most of you mainly use C++. Uh, but uh, I hope we often choose also dynamically typed uh, or higher level languages to prototype or script. Uh, that I, I say I hope because I don't want to be the you know, off-topic person right now, if that is not relevant for you. Uh, so, but anyways, we usually have friends who often choose these languages for some reason or another. And then in the, en in the end, we or our friends want to benefit from our C++ code in these higher level languages. So today I'll introduce Cython from Cython in quotes because that's the book's name. Uh, I gave this uh, here basically the ISPN and such if you want to dig deep more. And then, uh, so based on this book, I'll be uh, going through how static typing with Cython is done in C Python, and then how can we can interface. So, so what type of tools we have in Cython to interface already written C or C++ libraries again in Cython. And then I will present a small demo, and the demo is basically uh, borrowed from this ray tracing in one weekend series in this website raytracing.github.io by uh, Peter Shirley. So I'm, I have just uh, finished chapters one to six in the first book. There are three books. It's a fun website. I think you can spend some time there if you are into this one. And that's, that topic actually was uh, proposed by Harold himself. So I just wanted to say, okay, maybe I can combine the two. I don't know. I, uh, in the end, so that demo, in that demo, I will generate an HD background scene and I will randomly place spheres on the scene. And then the, what ray tracing does is basically, right now there is no material involved. Uh, from each pixel from the scene that goes to our eye or to the, or to the camera, uh, it calculates whether rays coming to the camera uh, hits any of the spheres. And if yes, uh, what is the closest point so that we will just blend the color and then we will see the actual shapes in like 3D. So what is Cython? Uh, Cython is basically two closely related things from the book. Cython, with a capital C if you wish, is a programming language that blends C Python with static typing system of C and C++. And lowercase one, Cython, is the name of the compiler, which basically translates this Cython uh, source code into efficient C or C++ source code. And this source code can then be compiled into a Python extension module or can be run uh, can, can be run independently as, a, as an executable. So this means because Cython is a superset of C Python, which basically keeps the Python language and just adds the static typing system of C and C++, every piece of C Python code is a valid Cython code. And thanks to the static typing, optional static typing, uh, the compiled code can get rid of all the unboxing operations at runtime. And by the way, when, while I'm uh, going through the presentation, uh, you can always interrupt me and ask questions if some stuff are irrelevant or are not uh, cl clear enough. So an example uh, how static typing in Cython works. Uh, so the left hand side is a Fibonacci uh, function in Python using memoization and with a simple for loop, basically. And the right hand side is a Cython with some static typing. Uh, we have just cdef double a and cdef int i. That's it. The rest is the same. And only this line change, these two lines basically, well, actually it's 50% of the code, it's four lines of code in the end. 
Uh, but that results uh, in a speed up from basically going left to right in 73 times uh, for n equals 90. I just borrowed this figure from, uh, from the book because it can just depend on maybe uh, the architecture also. And then uh, that basically comes from heap versus stack allocation, iterator versus C loop, and unboxing versus lack thereof. And I will come to that one when basically I will just compile using the Cython compiler now and annotate uh, what happens there behind the scenes. And by the way, I picked Cython. Of course, there are different. There are uh, a lot of different libraries in Python that helps you interface C and C++ code and in an automatic manner. Uh, and unfortunately, Cython doesn't do that. So, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, do you have a comparison with PyPy? Because I mean, this is a very tight loop. So I think yeah. Yeah, I haven't tried these things, but of course, this is like a simple cookbook example. Maybe you're right, uh, but I haven't tried that one. So, yeah. I was just wondering, because Python has these type annotations now, right? This, can, can, you, can you use that instead of the C that? Uh, yes. So basically, the question was, what about the type annotations in uh, Python, the language? Well, you're right. And again, maybe that would be even uh, more relevant to this one, maybe to compare. Uh, but Cython has more beautiful stuff than just these <coughs> type annotations. I will come to that one. I mean, it will just give you almost all the opportunities in C and C++, including standard template library. So you can use standard template library and algorithms, basically, in Cython code. And when you compile it, it will automatically choose the C++ compiler that supports it, hopefully, in your uh, platform, and then compiles it as a C++ code, basically. So I was going to also tell a bit about of these uh, other libraries, which I'm not aware of that much. You know, I haven't used that much. Uh, why I chose this one was because of the flexibility you, it gives you. I mean, you can mix and match C++ code inside Python. I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea, but still, in the end, uh, it helps you uh, design this library in a neat way. And then, uh, using also shared, pa shared pointers or unique pointers. So basically this smart pointer mechanism in the standard template library inside Cython, uh, you don't need to care about the two language boundary. So whatever is allocated in the uh, C++ or C side will be there. And whatever happens in the Python uh, world will be living in the Python world. And then uh, it will just mix and match really beautifully. That's why uh, I think Cython is nice. So let's let's try to annotate this one uh, this using this command. <coughs> the PyX file, it's there. Uh, maybe I don't need it now. The two codes. So basically, Cython, when, co when it compiles the uh, Cython file, this PyX file, it gives you, uh, with this uh, annotate switch, this annotation HTML file. And we can check what's going on. So the, the, the darker the yellow lines are, the more, inter the, the more Python interaction we have. Which means if you, if you use these functions, these functions or uh, line uh, locations which have dark yellow lines in loops, then we will have. The, 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 the bad performance of basically Python-like languages. So what's going on? I mean, if you click, this is behind the scenes of Python, what it does in, or C Python, the C implementation of Python, what it does, uh, just entering the function. And then here, basically we say, well, it's a range and I'm just going through the range, uh, but it's really dark uh, because of this. So what's going on behind the scenes here is that uh, because of the dynamic typing system, uh, this range and creature can be anything. So Python cannot uh, give guarantees 
uh, as to what range is and therefore what i could be. So at every iteration, it tries to understand what, a, what i is. And then uh, it tries to unbox the correct value from there. And then finally it returns the, the, the result. So here, there's also another problem. Uh, even if we are working with float objects here, 0 and 1, in Python world, these are uh, heap allocated structures, boxed in the Python object. So this unboxing also happens there, and even worse is temporary variables are not you know, destroyed in the stack. It's from, in, when, whenever a temporary variable is allocated or deallocated, it's a heap allocation or deallocation in the Python world. And what happens here is basically uh, we just annotate that n is integer. So at the entrance of the function, Python just makes sure it has uh, something, uh, that the function receives something that is convertible to int, and then it converts to int. And this int is the C int, by the way. And then we define that a and i are doubles and integers, but of course also b is a double. And then now, because Python knows n uh, and i are integers, this range n is converted to a plain old C loop. And that's where we get the benefit from this one uh, compared to this one around two orders of magnitude, roughly 73 times uh, faster code. So this is what happens. And then uh, here, basically, Cython annotate fib psi pi x basically just generated the C code for us with an annotation HTML file. But we need to also compile it into a module so that we can use it in the Python world. And then if we run the, the other part, um, so Fibonacci setup, built the extension right now in place. And that's it. So using that generated C file, Python generated us uh, an extension module, which we can then use um, in this simple application file. So basically, uh, from Fibonacci's side, I would like to import both versions and then run them together. And then that's it. You get the result. So the setup for this one is using this tutors by default, or the, the, the recommended way of uh, compiling these Cython packages is via this tutors and the Cythonize uh, command from Cython build, basically. And it's easy. In a setup uh, method or function, you use uh, external modules, Cythonize, whatever your Cython file is. And here, basically, you can also put uh, include directories, library directories, uh, other sources, if you're going to mix and match C and C++ code, which I will come to later. And then uh, it will just do the building accordingly uh, for, for us. So that's it. So far, so good. Yep. So I'll start track a bit. So this compiled Cython, is this usable from CPython, the, the extension module? Sorry? So what you compile there? Yeah. It's, it's it's, it's extension module going to be visible from C Python? Uh, the Cython command just generates the C or C++ for us. Then you generated uh, an extension module? Is that an extension module? Using the setup pi, yeah, is the extension module for C Python. Yes. So if, if you want, like we can also go check the C file or maybe just a bunch of them. So uh, it generates efficiently this C file that hooks into your, uh, hooks into the Python API and then does things efficiently and cleverly or compared to a uh, maybe standard handwritten uh, module. Not an export one maybe, but I don't know. So uh, we've, I've already shown you cdef double and cdef i and b, uh, int, and we can basically use uh, a lot of cdefs in the Cython world from C. 
and I, I've just listed a couple of examples so we can either use in the block form or just line by line and then it can support integers long integers or float whatever the plain old data types are of course pointers or double pointers or uh, arrays alias types are there so if size type is an alias type there uh, we can use it as well and then it can use structs and unions struct types and union types to define the, these variables and it can also uh, it can also allow for function pointers and function pointers to function pointers and so on so all these complex stuff we can do uh, there so there is there are a couple of differences so from C we cannot use the static keyword word uh, static is not allowed in Cython and then uh, dereferencing pointers is always via indexing uh, so if this integer pointer p is only uh, pointing to a one variable like not an, not an array still we need to have uh, p of zero because the asterisk in python is basically splitting arrays or lists so it is reserved for that right that's why we have to use this one and then uh, member access for structs and uh, or for, for either pointers or normal structs is always via the dot operator so there is no uh, you know dash greater than operator uh, in Cython if you want to have member access so uh, these are how we define basic these were how we define uh, variables we can also define functions using uh, cdef and basically in Cython world there are now three different function definitions uh, cdef def and cpdef basically cdef functions are only available to def and cpdef functions from within the same source uh, because they are compiled from the same source they can be reachable from all the def and cpdef uh, functions from the same source well there's also you you can also use definition files which i will not touch in this um, presentation but you can also make uh, any cdef function available to any other module using definition files uh, then def functions are available to python basically when we compile the module uh, from module we can import <coughs> def functions or cpdef functions but not cdef functions so in this case case if fact is the module name we cannot import cfact into a python world uh, but we can definitely import rep cfact which in turn uses cfact the efficient call uh, internally and you can we can use it in the python world and uh, here there's a catch because python does not allow for me method overloading uh, the the function names have to be different so here we have to have a different name for the c version of the file and the wrapped version uh, basically and cpdef's task is basically to just make them happen both at the same time so when we write cpdef function and we can annotate also the inputs and outputs uh, basically cython generates cpfact both in the c world and the python world for us and then if we call it from python we will have basically a wrapped uh, version available uh, with the same name if it's called from a uh, from the cython world and when I say from the Cython world, I'm just talking about PyX files, then the C version of it will be called. So there won't be any uh, Python interaction if we are in within Cython. Uh, and I hope this will be more uh, apparent in the demo section where I will show a lot of code, basically. Yeah? Uh, when you write CDEF, do you need to uh, type annotate everything or is it possible to leave some types? Out? No, because we're in the C world, uh, we have to type annotate and in this case, if we drop this one, it's going to be void, I think, because of C semantics. And so there's no type inference or... Uh, I'm not so sure about CDEF, but Cython has compiler directives to basically automatically annotate types or uh, infer types, try to infer types at least. Uh, which is off by default, which we can use, but I'm not so sure if it also applies here. Yep. I'm not really exactly clear on the use case. Uh, it seems like you, you want to use this. If you have Python code, you want to speed it up. You add these yep. 
So it's not for it's not so much for for interacting between several but more for speeding up existing Python code. Uh, I think I will come to extension types later and also some uh, you know interfacing section there. You can also interface C files directly, and the good part is they are compiled together. So that the the, the headers of the C file and the, the libraries are compiled together with the module. So there won't be any function call overhead from your module to the C, if you wish, yeah, but, but you from the from Python. Type annotated Python yeah. code. That's that's more. I mean, as a C plus plus programmer, but yeah. write the extension stuff in C plus plus and call it from Python. Yeah. This seems to be more for optimizing existing, or if you're yeah. not comfortable with C plus plus and you want to speed up your. In the demo, for instance, I will use uh, std vector from C plus plus inside Python without you know, calling any other C++ or C library. Normally, FFI also handles these type of stuff, but there will be function call overheads. And in these loops, it will be adding up. I mean, if you have double loops, in this case, ray tracing, it's a matrix, and uh, you will have these penalties. So I think uh, here the catch is to avoid all these unnecessary calls, uh, if possible. But I'm not... So sure if I could answer the question I mean properly you, or when you are programming like this, you're yeah. somewhere in between. You're yeah. you you want to program in Python, but you still want to have the speed of of of, uh, of real types. Yeah. So, so I, I think maybe I can answer a little bit. Yeah. <coughs> so so one use case at least is to where you want to wrap a C library or C plus library and provide it to a Python program. Um, if you're using the C Python API, you have to do all the manual work of actually yeah. doing reference counting and so on that Python does, uh, which becomes painful very quickly. And with C Python, uh, that takes care of uh, all of that. So making the, the boundary between C and Python is much easier when you have Python in it. That's mm -hmm. kind of So these are how the functions are defined. And then uh, we also can define structs, unions, and enums, uh, or you know, declare them uh, using, e again, cdef and structs, so the familiar notation. And we can also write c type def struct and such also in the Cython world like this. So basically, uh, step by step, actually, I'm coming to how to wrap these libraries in C or C++, because uh, the language also provides them for interfacing or wrapping these libraries in uh, native Python uh, types or extension types. Uh, so structs, unions, and enums are like this uh, in block form. And uh, basically, structs are, uh, when, when we define a struct in uh, Cython, then in Python world, the names are also available in the function. Uh, or in, in the constructor notation. So we can just change their names and then uh, you know, write their argument names and then call it however we like. And then we can also give dictionaries to basically fill up the, uh, the structures. The same correspondence also happens between standard template library of C++, so containers, like uh, containers of C++ template library, vector goes to list, and then maps goes to maps and unordered maps go to dictionaries and such. So there is this uh, correspondence that is handled for us behind the scenes too, if we want to have it in Cython. And then uh, aliasing, type fusing, and type casting are also there. So basically, from among them, I think type fusing is the most relevant for C++ people because here. Uh, we are now getting to templates, if you, if you wish. So we can fuse uh, any set of types in a type name, and then we can define our uh, functions <coughs> accordingly. And then, of course, they have to match now in, in terms of type. So we, it cannot be my double and my float. They need to be the same type or integer in this case, because it is only defined for doubles and floats, the fused type annotated function. And then finally, the extension types are, uh, I think, important. And that opens up a lot of um, uh, options for the Cython developer to interface, uh, either interface C and C++, or write stuff and then uh, push it to the Python world, to the user in the Python world. Uh, so assume that the particle is an object, uh, is a class of an object, uh, subclassing an object. 
and its initializer is here or constructor and there's this get momentum defined which is mass times velocity uh, everything is the same if if uh, we are writing cython except for the cdef declaration in front of class and then some annotations again because these are cdef normally they are not available in the python world so you cannot have uh, you know you cannot create a particle object and then object dot m or p or v it's not uh, allowed uh, if we don't write anything but if you write read only it's only available in python for reading purposes and if you annotate it as public then th that variable m in, in this case will be open to the user of uh, python basically and then uh, this is what I said. There's also uh, special methods called C init and dialog for basically handling uh, heap allocation in the C world. So C init is where usually we, we have either new operator in C or malloc in C. And dialog has the delete or uh, dialog correspondence in C or C, that code. And then extension types can have cdef, def, and cpdef methods, of course. And uh, cpdef and def methods can be overridden from Python classes. So when, whenever a Python class uh, subclasses a Cython extension type, it can override these methods if they are annotated either def or cpdef. Then uh, we can do a lot of different stuff. For instance, when, when you have a fast library in C, you can do callback mechanism easily uh, by just subclassing some callback object uh, with an API you design. So uh, using all these uh, type definition um, properties, we can interface C and C++. So interfacing C uh, requires, of course, um, some header file interaction. And that is handled with the cdef extern um, keyword or block, basically. Uh, cdef extern from some header H uh, opens a block. And then we just pick whatever uh, function prototypes we are going to use in the compiled code. And now we are entering the already compiled C library with an API. Uh, but there's a catch here. So this block uh, does not import anything to automatically to Cython. So we still need to write uh, them manually. And if you make a mistake, there will be link time error afterwards. Because it doesn't check at compile time what happens uh, or if this one is actually in the header. What it does is basically it injects this uh, include header H statement in the generated C code or in the case of C++, in the C++ code, and then uh, writes the, or generates the remaining C or C++ code. Uh, but then if we, if, then when they are going to link against each other, the, the link time problem happens because uh, we are not careful here. Uh, if, if you're not careful, careful here, then problems happen. And then uh, we, the macros can also be defined as uh, functions or some variables in this sense. So in the original header file, this was a macro and then this was a macro. So define statements and define statements basically. And then uh, in this case, uh, from C, we cannot use volatile and restrict in the Cython world. And const is supported, but is only used for type defs and return values of functions to generate correct code uh, so that it compiles. And uh, because, because of this reason, it's not needed for declaring function arguments. So function arguments cannot, uh, should, uh, you, d you don't need to declare function arguments as const float if it's const float in the header file, because we are passing anyways the, the variables directly to the C world. So it doesn't change anything from the, uh, in, the in the Cython world. Uh, does yeah. this mean it uses CNAME mangling? Pardon? Does this mean it uses CNAME mangling, which is basically doesn't check the type of the parameter when you link? I guess that I don't know. Later on, you compile the C or C code, basically. What decides if it's C or C that's generated? Uh, I will show it also in the files. So the, uh, there's a directive. You just say language is C if you're using C things. By default, it's C. 
Any other questions? No. And uh, for the C++, on top of what we have in the C semantics or these declarations and type defs and such, uh, we have an addition to the extern from block, which is basically the namespace. So if you're working with C++ libraries, then we can also annotate the namespace or choose the namespace. And uh, if there are nested namespaces, then we will do colon colon here, like the new C++ supports. And then uh, the rest is similar, but now if you have a C++ class, we, c we, we need to use CDEF CP CP CPP class. If you are going to use uh, the class declaration from a C++ header file. And then uh, we can use a standard uh, library, like in this way, and we can define exceptions if the, the function is not no except. So if we expect exceptions, uh, exceptions uh, we can also annotate it. Here, for instance, this is this constness or uh, not needing constness uh, happens. Uh, Basically, the return type is consti, and in the C++ standard, I think these are also references, like consti reference, consti reference, and consti reference. Uh, you can put references here, and you can put const, but it doesn't change in this uh, setting the way Cython compiles. Or uh, Cython already has the, the libraries imported like this way, so from libcpp.vector c import vector will just import the vector from standard template library for us to use and then we can just define vector of integers like uh, we usually do uh, with the cdef. Then some code like how these things go in uh, together in a python file uh, if there are no questions. And it's an it's, yeah this is like learning a new language with a lot of quirky rules. So I doubt any yeah. C++ programmer wants to write in the code in this way. I, I feel yeah, like you, you might be right, yes. <laughs> it might be good for you have a large C, uh, Python code base, you want to optimize yeah. the work. But uh, for porting C++ code in this way, that's a nightmare, really. <laughs> well, um, it's not porting C++, again, like, uh, if, we, if we go back to this Fibonacci example, annotated version of it, I mean, Cython also provides a framework to tell if you are using Python or if you have to use Python at some point, where the, the bottleneck is in terms of computation, like where you lose uh, a lot of time and I I whether you can optimize these things with these uh, things. Like for instance, this code uh, when written in Python will be so short and maybe with a couple of CDEF additions in the hottest areas in these loops, you just get some speed ups. So, uh, and then there are also other problems if still you're using Python, for instance, when you want to use a C++ or C library that has multi-threading support, because of the global interpreter lock, you have problems. But then in Cython, you can also avoid that one easily. You can define CDEF functions with no uh, global interpreter lock, and then you can do uh, multi-thread parallelism behind the scenes, uh, which is going to be way easier. So it depends, I think, on the use case. Yeah. yeah. And if anything goes wrong, it's really hard to hunt it down and debug it. Well, you have the debugger in the end, right? Yeah, but this is cross multi language. Yeah. So it's gonna. It's an example uh, in the first book f between five, uh, one to six chapters. And then uh, it's going to be creating an HD image and then locate cam the camera one unit, one unit uh, in front of the scene and then put two, in this case it's, a two, it's two spheres and I will try to add 10 spheres as well and calculate whether uh, and if so where the rays hit the spheres and then fuse the uh, or using uh, blending color the uh, spheres. Now I need to go here, and maybe here. So the Python code, and this code I borrowed directly from the website. It was a C++ code. I just verbatim copied and uh, did the Python uh, stuff here. And it's this much. 
this many lines basically. So um, it has a vector three class. So it's basically a fixed three dimension, uh, fixed size three dimensional uh, vector. And then it has the operations uh, they need in for this project. So addition, subtraction, uh, division, multiplication with a scalar and uh, multiplication with a vector. And then uh, the length of a vector, which is basically the norm of the vector. And then make a unit vector out of a given vector. And then make the vector a unit vector. And then ray basically has two vectors. So basically a ray goes from an origin and points to some direction. So uh, for this reason it has the direction vector and the position vector uh, there. And then um, the dot operator is defined between two vectors. And then um, I need to cre create some uh, struct here. And for that I used data class from data classes. And then um, there's a hittable object which defines some hit uh, function and it has to be overridden in the subclasses. For, for instance, Sphere is a subclass on a, hitab on a hittable object and then it has a center and a radius. And then uh, to calculate the hit, basically um, it, it, it gets the normal where the hit point occurs and then it tries to solve a second order equation, uh, one <coughs> variable, it's simple. And by, by just looking at the discriminant of this equation, it tells uh, whether if it's a hit or not. And if it's a hit, what is the closest location to the eye or to the, uh, to the camera? So if, if a ray intersects at, at the tangent of the sphere, there's one hit point. If uh, otherwise it will be two points. So one close to the ray, one close to the camera. And then uh, the closest point is important because then we will have this 3D like uh, scene uh, when the objects are placed. Then the, the author in this website chooses to implement hitable list as a, a structure of arrays, basically. So it is a list of hitable objects and for each hitable object it calculates and then it just reports the closest hit point. And then you color the, the ray given the world, given the objects basically with respect to the scene. And then finally you generate the image and then save the image. So the timings I have are here up until <coughs> this point. Yep. Uh, I blinked for a second. What did you say about the data class uh, directive up there? The data class annotation? No, it was further down. The data class, uh, the, that thing. I just wanted to have something similar to a uh, C struct with annotated types and such. So that kind of uh, skips the constructor work? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I, I guess this um, decorator does that, yeah. So then, so the left hand side is what I've shown you. Right hand side is the Cython file. And the only change is the first line. In the si uh, with a, with a directive, you say, hey, Cython, uh, lang language level is three. So Cython by default generates for two Python languages, Python 2 and Python 3. Uh, and I want to keep focus on Python 3. And that's what I said. And because I haven't done anything yet, I, I don't care if it's a C file or a C++ file. And then uh, Cython compiles this. Uh, maybe. Right now we are compiling them uh, for extension modules, these files. And as I said, the only difference was the, that one. So without doing anything, well, maybe, oops. So I have the timing files like uh, for Python and uh, Python for 
the compiled one. It will not finish before my talk, I guess, because of Python. Uh, it, it takes a lot of time uh, to, to do that, but I can go uh, over to the other file. So the other file, the right, now the left hand side is not annotated, not done anything. Uh, Cython file. So just the directive Cython use language level 3. So generate me Python 3 uh, or C Python 3 code. <laughs> but the right hand side is a couple of CDEF uh, declarations here and there so that I'm just hinting uh, the compiler to, to use uh, as much information as possible to generate efficient code. Uh, so the first in the first one, because I'm going to use uh, a vector from C++ standard library, I'm also telling uh, these tutors to, to use C++ as the compiler. That's why I'm annotating language as C++. And then, uh, again, the class is just a CDEF class now. And then these devs are CPDEF because I want to use them as efficiently as possible in C but still make them available to Python world. Nothing has changed there. And then uh, these magic functions or special uh, methods uh, are not C defable. They can only stay def, but I can at least annotate what index is or what value is uh, beforehand. And then uh, the multiplication is a different story. So basically in Python, there's mal and um, rmal, the reverse multiplication. So if the first one doesn't apply, then it changes, it changes the order of the operands and then calls rmal instead. Uh, but in Cython, it doesn't have it. So Cython only has mal. Then you need to make sure which instance you're working on in an if statement. And that's the only difference here. And of course, rmal is uh, commented out in the right hand side. Then the length of a vector is basically returning double and then uh, making a unit vector from a vector returns also a vector. And then here, make unit vector. I'm dividing by some uh, double and I want to use C division rules. Basically, this means, okay, don't touch this part in, in the Python world. Don't check for division by zero. Let C do its job uh, properly there. I just want to have C semantics in the division. Similar things here appear in uh, CDEF class. The only difference here is basically I tell in advance what A and B are. Uh, they are VEC3. Vec and then uh, the DEF statements are CPDEF. So basically it's not that of a uh, problem to, to help Cython to do its job in the in, in And then all these four loops, uh, I want to have C loops. That's why I, uh, I need to annotate indices with in, in, integers, integer types. Everything then uh, flows like this. And then uh, the, the hits are, again, like the, the logic doesn't change. You just write in Python, uh, but you just annotate above what the, the uh, types of the values are. And then in the generate image, I, I tell here using these um, decorators, I don't want any bound checking on Python objects. So I know what I'm doing uh, because I'm, uh, I'm writing in C uh, and I don't want anything there. And then I don't want wraparound. So basically negative indices are undefined for me, but uh, in Python, it will just rotate back. So I don't want this one. And again, I want to have uh, C division semantics because I have double for, double for loop below and in this double for loop I have division by numbers and then at each iteration if we don't turn it off Python checks whether there is division by zero or not here I care I, I don't care about it because division by zero when it comes to doubles are fine for me I will get, get inf or negative inf depending on the other number what does the Python do if there is division by zero it uh, throws, yeah. And that's it. I don't know if the code finished. No, it's still running. <laughs> it's, 
in the end it will generate this one uh, hopefully we are still waiting for Python because it, it hasn't reported yet and and then yeah I was going to put maybe 10 more spheres but it will again take even take even more time for Python because right now there are two spheres in the double for loop so if you have 10 spheres then it's going to be multiplying the double for loop by 10 instead of 2 so it's just adding up but in short I can give you some timings so uh, the first version here so from left to right only adding Cython declaration and compiling it has given 50% uh, uh, improvement. So basically from, let's say, 160 seconds to 80 seconds. And then uh, the type annotated version here, the right hand side, and I think they have similar, yeah, there's only two more lines here on the right hand side. So not much of a difference. And this one has given, with respect to the first version, one order of magnitude. Uh, but the good part is, uh, it's not there yet. And I know why it's not there yet. At least when I annotate this one, it shows directly that, hey, these um, special functions under under add, under under mal, I am spending a lot of time there. So they are really uh, dark yellow. Then it means I need to just replace them with just uh, proper cpdef functions. And I need to call uh, the the methods there then of course I will not be using maybe uh, this type of plus and multiplication between vectors but then I will get up to maybe t two orders of magnitude uh, improvement in the speed uh, and then I think that's that is all so basically Cython is a language that extends Python with static typing features. And it has this compiler that generates efficiency and C++ code. Uh, then the, overall, it provides a nice framework to focus on the parts of Python code to be optimized. So maybe if you're writing Python, you don't need a C++ library. If you can optimize a couple of loops, uh, especially in this case, nested loops, then maybe you're, you already, you're already good to go. And it helps tightly integrate with C++ libraries because it generates the C++ code with the C or C++ library you're using with and then compiles them together if you have the headers. And uh, it has some more neat f uh, features like exception handling. I've just shown a, a, a small line. Uh, P-range for multi-threading purposes, but it's mostly for uh, embarrassing the parallel stuff. And then no gil and uh, other constructs that are available when you want to get rid of the global interpreter lock or keep it. And for s f definition files for code organization. So in the beginning of the talk, I said some functions are available only in the source code, but you can also export them using these uh, header files, PXD files, and then any other Cython module will be just calling these uh, C files as efficiently, even if they are different modules. And with that, I just thank you for your attention. <laughs> Still running. Uh, question? Yeah? What happens if you call uh, from Python with a wrong type <coughs> during runtime? Uh, it's a runtime exception from Python. Ah. Because in these type annotations, Python tries to unbox them and then cast it to the proper C type. And if it cannot do that, it will just run time. Uh, uh, create a type error, not run time, sorry, type error exception. Ah, right. Yeah. It's actually the same thing as in the type annotated pure Python. Yes. Word. I thought that was only in the linting tools. I guess I don't know enough Python. No, I don't know. <laughs> So how far will the optimization go? Will it uh, unroll the uh, new CMD instructions? I haven't checked that one. I haven't tried that one, to be honest. But uh, the thing is, when you check some of these for loops, they are already um, simple enough. And if your compiler supports it, you can always attach compiler um, switches to the setup pi so that you can, it can ask the compiler to generate if uh, the compiler finds it sane. But I don't know if you can hook in directly your own intrinsics. Yep. You 
you said you took the algorithm from a C++ source originally, right? Yeah. Did you compare what's the performance from the from that? There was a sorry, there was a bug. I need to first maybe report and fix it there. So it was a bit uh, of a problem to have this up and going. Uh, but I will do that. And I, I'm planning to push this one on GitHub in a public way. And I will report these things. Maybe, you know, I'm not the writer of either Cython or uh, author of this ray tracing. So I don't advocate for either of them. But I think they were both cool. And I'd like to do that. But I haven't done yet. Uh, how fast did it render the image that the Cython compiled stuff? Uh, the type annotated version, which is two, two lines more code, but, but maybe in many of these uh, lines we had CDEF statements, uh, it is running 13 seconds. In C++ you can write something that uh, renders it as a few nanoseconds, basically, yeah, yeah. if you optimize C++ code. Yeah. And can you compare this with uh, Mumba, for example? No. Again, there are a lot of like maybe Swig and other libraries. So, Mumba is super simple. You basically just import and yeah. import an annotation and then it will uh, optimize it. To, yeah. to be honest, I mean, this example, uh, where? This example is already a matrix operation. I would use NumPy for that one. It would, it would have been the fastest, I think. <laughs> but yeah, it's just trying to understand what and how good Cython does. Uh, these type of things. Plus the, the annotation really helps focus on the, the important parts in that sense. Uh, yeah, I'm generally curious because I come from the C++ where so I haven't done many, uh, much Python. So for me the answer is obvious but it might not be for everybody. Do you think the Siphon version is easier to read and maintain than an actual C++ version? I'm also comfortable with C++ so I don't know and I don't know much uh, Python either. Because my colleagues are using Python a lot, so I like to use uh, Python and Cython. Normally I use Julia more, for instance, but you know, I, I, I'm for the compiled language. And for me, C++, the modern C++ it is, is easy to read and maintain, but maybe I'm biased like you. Uh, I don't so know. I guess your colleagues' opinion on this would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. Yeah. Sorry. This is you? Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, sorry. So I think I can, I can sell Siphon a little bit, maybe. Because there is a use case where, let's say you're working on a C++ library, and you have other people in your company using Python that don't know C++, and they want to interface from Python to C++, <laughs> and you don't want to handle C, C Python's interface or do any kind of work, let them do the work. Then you can give them Siphon. So they can write basically Python code and they can interface to C++ efficiently and do efficient things with your C code. But you don't have to get involved. You can stay in C++. Mm -hmm. yeah. nice. um, the best part is I think the pointers, like um, using FFI, try defining uh, pointers or pi pointers to functions are a mess. Here you just write CDEF, whatever pointer type you have or pointer to function type you have then you're good to go. And then you just define your callbacks easily. That's, I think, really helpful. I guess that those are the two use cases for interface code or for speeding up existing Python code. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes? So what is the <coughs> benefit of the Pi bind, for example? I haven't tried that one. I, I, I have just experimented with Cython. Again, I'm not a super good Python person. And when I tried, I first uh, researched what is available in the language itself. So FFI was there. So I, I haven't even checked other uh, options. I just wanted to have something first from the language itself. And then maybe uh, search for third party. Yeah. So you, you had a question. Kind of. I was wondering about the compatibility with the uh, Python libraries from Cython. Uh, like, for example, when I looked into such options, uh, it seemed like a year ago, neither Python nor Cython uh, seemed to be compatible with TensorFlow, for example, directly. But I guess you could probably just put your code, Cython code, separately from the TensorFlow file. Uh, NumPy is written in Cy uh, Cython. 
So NumPy has, I think, according to the book, if I'm not mistaken, 10,000 lines of Cython code. So it is written in, and, or maybe it was Sage. Sage has, I think, 10,000, but NumPy also had it. And SciPy is now moving towards, or has moved uh, towards uh, Cython. So basically, for me, the three most important libraries are there, and then they're using it. And TensorFlow, I don't know. Maybe you're right, but at least these three uh, major libraries are using Cython. Yep. Okay, then we will start now with the break. Thank you. <laughs> Python finished. <laughs> it's the 10 simulations, that's it, or 10, ten trials. <laughs>